Hey everyone, I'm back, Sleepy Reader, Damien, here with a, another back issue haul. So, um, two weekends ago, there was a sale at a comic book shop nearby. It was a, um, I think it was like a 40th anniversary of the comic book shop sale. So, a very old comic book shop, 50% uh, off all back issues. So, as usual, I go a little crazy. I bought a lot of back issues recently, so maybe a little less crazy than I have at some of the other sales. It's amazing how often there are these half-off sales. So, it's most of the back issues I buy, is that's now how I get them. Uh, before I dive it too deeply into that, for those of you interested in older comics, Bronze and Silver Age comics, I want to highly recommend a newish channel. I should have shouted her out sooner. Um, Silver Haired Bronze Age Babe Comics is the name of her channel. Um, I think she's exactly my age. And I'm a little upset when she shows the AARP bag that she has. I'm not joining AARP. I'm too young. But apparently she's old enough for AARP. But she anyway, she has a fantastic channel. Talks a lot about early bronze and Silver Age DC for the most part. And... Um, her videos are usually three to six minutes long, so she's very succinct, very entertaining, unlike me. But you should definitely check her out. I will I will remember to put a link down below. Oh, speaking of down below, I got this shirt from another newish channel, uh, Stango Tiger Fists. But he's not entirely new because he used to have a channel called... Um, I think it was silver metal collector or silver coin collector something like that he was part of the the precious metals collectors and coin collectors community i i laugh at myself because i probably have said that wrong but um and then he was branching out into comics and now he started this uh stango tiger fist and he has this great um great t-shirt that he designed i'm a little worried about like if i wear wear this in the mundane world what they will think floppies mean but anyway, it's a great t-shirt. Um, so I'll try to link to Stango Tiger Fist down below. And I think he has the links in the descriptions for his videos of how to buy these t-shirts. So on with the show. Uh, I spent very little money, but on things that excited me, kind of readers' copies mostly quite. Like this fairly beat up copy of Thunder Agent's Dynamo. What is this? Issue 3. I think maybe there were just three issues of Dynamo, and I think I now have two of them. I'm kind of zeroing in on kind of a complete Thunder Agents collection. I'm very close. I have all the mainline issues and just have a few of these sideline ones to go. Incredible Wally Wood cover. Um, happily, it's not on the radar of... I hope to get a better copy of this eventually, and of some of the other ones that have more beat up. It's not really on the radar of the speculative, speculative collectors, the key issue collectors, so we get to get this Bollywood goodness at reasonable prices. Similarly, very beat up, um, good prices, but I don't, I don't think even good copies of this are worth a whole lot. From Charlton is uh, more Peter Cannon Thunderball. I read one of the ones I um, acquired in Maine. See the previous few videos back. Um, which reminds me, I should also shout out Chad's Attic because he is back. He has done a um, another haul video. He did a haul video with me and then he showed his comics from a recent, what was it, Boston Comics Fest or something. And that was a great video. So I will link to Chad if you haven't caught him yet, um, maybe we'll really pull him back into the video, the YouTube world. Uh, so, yeah, Chad's Attic did a great haul. Also, a lot of Bronze Age stuff. So, when I was with him and got s my first Peter Cannon Thunderball, I really enjoyed reading it. So, I'm now eager to collect them all. And, oh, another... Well, I'm gonna, I was going to shout out another channel, but right at the moment I can't remember his name. But anyway, uh, there was another channel here on YouTube, and I'll, I'll have to shout him out in another video, who's inspired me to try and get all of the sort of superheroes from Charlton that inspired Watchmen. That's a fascinating group of heroes. 
And Thunderbolts just is a really unique idea. And although he has a, um, what would you call it, a, a third world assistant or a, you know, a, um, a, it's not clear the race of his, of his sidekick Taboo, but his relationship with Taboo is really fascinating and really cool from what I read so far. So that was, um, the other thing is these have weird numbering because they haven't, this is number 55, but there weren't really, there were, weren't really 55 issues of Thunderbolt. They just randomly took the numbering of some other comic of theirs and started up Thunderbolt. And what one is this? 59. And then another short thing I'm trying to complete is the um, original Starfire. Um, so this, I, I must be getting close. This is number seven. I think I may only, be, only have one or two issues to go. I think maybe there were nine issues of Starfire or eight issues. Um, I still haven't read a single one. I, I kind of obsessively want to get them all before I read them, even though comics back then were being were read to be ri uh, written to be read by themselves. I think they're all drawn by Mike Vosberg. Is that his name? I can't remember if it was Mike or something else. Um, but with a variety of writers on it. I don't even know what the real story behind Starfire is. She's obviously an outer space lady barbarian. <laughs> then I bought a bunch of Superman, starting with Superman number 300. Hopefully the neighbor dog will start bark stop barking in a moment. Um, Superman 300 was a special imaginary tale. What if Superman arrived on Earth in 1976, I think it was, and then was a grown-up superhero in the fabulous, unimaginable year of 2001. So we get a imaginary 2001 metropolis. Um, Written in the mid 70s. I'm getting very distracted by the barking. And also in Maine, we picked up a Superman 307, uh, which my daughter and I read, and it was a lot of fun, kind of a weird story where apparently Krypton is fake and all of Superman's memories are fake. Uh, we'll see if that ends up being true. So I got that's. 308, also a Neil Adams cover, like the other issue where that showed uh, Supergirl dropping Candor and destroying the city. Always happy to get a Neil Adams cover for four dollars. No, uh, half of four dollars, I should say. And then um, the story completes in this issue 309. We have yet to read that one. We have read, we have read this one so far. Um, and. Supergirl still involved, which is important to me and my daughter. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got three o nine, and since they were so cheap, I just kept going. I got three ten. Those three were written by Jerry Conway, which makes them kind of different. But I think it goes back to Carrie Bates or one of the other regular Superman writers with this issue, unfortunately. So I got three ten, and somehow I missed three eleven. I got three twelve. So I'm paying, you know, two dollars, a dollar fifty, depending on these things. Um, fun, especially when Supergirl appears. Uh, and what number is this? Three thirteen and three fourteen. So we'll see how those are. I kind of feel like a lot of these Supermen are never going to be reprinted or not come out in the the hardback volumes that I would like to see them in. They may have been reprinted in those black and white showcases and whatnot, and random ones may appear in themed Superman books. <clears throat> but while they're busy collecting in hardback all the Golden Age Superman, I don't see any sign of Silver Age Superman, not to mention bronze. And I think this would be the end of the Silver Age. Um, or maybe the Bronze Age. That's weird. Okay, this... I. I before, again in Maine, got s some Inferior 5, read the issue um, with my daughter, and it was bizarre. It, uh, I think I'll do a video on the Inferior 5, but um, I guess it was kind of a cross between not Brand Eck, Mad Magazine, and just some other attempt at 
what these older writers at DC thought would be a hip humor, laughing style comic <laughs> at the time. So that's issue three with the go-go checks. And then issue 11, maybe this came out sporadically because now we're definitely we're in the 20 cent era instead of the 12 cent era. Um, so I don't know what happened there. Maybe they stopped and started it or maybe it came out quarterly or something. Anyway, that surprises me. And um, oh, me. and I got another copy of this Inferior 5. This is the one that I read with my daughter that I bought in Maine number 6, which is a 12 center also. So I'm guessing they stopped it and then restarted it um, in the Bronze Age. So this is still late late golden age, uh, sorry, late silver age. So this is the one I read with my daughter, which is a bizarre trip to the DC Comics bullpen, you might say, which is in an underground castle in the basement of their building. Um, but uh, I got an extra copy of it because I kind of feel like I grabbed this Inferior 5 issue out from under Chad, so I actually spent, plan to send him one of the copies we've got. Um, and perhaps along with some other goodies, Chad, if you're listening. And then I realized, I thought I, I used to think I had all of these, but I was looking through my CLZ and I am missing a bunch of the Darwin Cook Spirit series. So I grabbed a bunch of these. What was the, the sticker price was 350 so I paid half of that. It was a good time to collect all these. So that's um, number three and number six. Great Darwin Cook covers. I plan to reread all of these. Number seven, sometime in the not too distant future. I'm, I'm sort of prepping myself for a deep dive back into the spirit. Um, number eight. Number nine. Were some of these drawn by J Bone um, rather than Darwin Cook, or was J Bone his inker? I'm not sure. J Bone has a very similar style to Darwin Cook. And number 10, I wouldn't even know that's a Darwin Cook cover, but it's a very cool cover. Here's a crazy cover from number 11. I guess this is the um, December. This must be the Halloween issue, of course, but this looks like the Day of the Dead issue also. Anyway, that I'm very excited to have those. And then a little more spendy, I grabbed a few things that were in the box where they keep new acquisitions that are in nice co nice condition. Well, it's not that good. But anyway, got a copy of this issue of the Spectra. I don't own many, if any other, issues of the Spectra. I'd like to get more Spectre just because I love, visually love this kind of thing. I don't know if the stories are good or not. I think that's a Neil Adams cover. It could be just Dick Giordano or sometimes there's even covers where Neil Adams is just the inker. So I have to look into that. I'm not 100% sure if it's a Neil Adams cover, but it's very Neil Adams-ish. This is a Batman Detective Comics with Batman and Batgirl. So I would have paid $5 for this. Again, I'm obsessing. I'm pretty sure it's a Neil Adams cover. Um, not totally sure. And then I got this uh, this Lois Lane 25 Center, which um, these are full of reprints of earlier Lois Lane stories. And I'm I'm I think I may already have this one, but I'm getting doubles of these of a number of these giant size reprints of um, of Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen and and maybe some other Superman family ones to give to a friend. A specific friend who is interested in that stuff but doesn't know how to find find them except paying crazy prices on eBay um, then for myself and with a faint hope of reading it with my daughter I got this copy of cracked it's been a million I don't think I've read cracked since I was 11 or 12 and um, this was only a dollar and I was just like I wonder what this is like it wasn't was cracked by DC or is it or was the, I mean, it's not DC by Marvel, or was there another Marvel 
a mad knockoff and cracked with separate. It is art by um, John Severin on the cover there. And then I couldn't resist this for $5. Uh, I'm sure I've read the stories in reprints. This is the brief time when they did a magazine size Superman, uh, sorry, Spider-Man comic, I believe in the late 60s. I'm going to open it up and see. I wonder if there was hopes here of... Well, I think they were always worried that the newsstand distribution was in trouble. And I wonder if there were hopes of creating a magazine line that would stand out on the newsstand better and perhaps sell in more places. Oh, and it's black and white. Um, yeah, I've definitely read other a reprint of this, maybe in color somewhere. Or is it a reprint that is done in black and white? This copy feels a little yucky. <laughs> Like maybe a little bit of water staining, water damage. Um, it's from 1968, July 1968, which was probably means May 1968, I suppose. I can't tell if it's uh, if it's reprints or not. I don't think it is. So anyway, cool kind of item. I guess again something people. Well, it is in not great condition, but something that people are... I, I think I've been seeing these at this store for quite a while uh, with no one ever grabbing them. And just two more items left. I'm always eyeing these... Um, I guess it was $10, so $5 always eyeing these old first editions from DC and wondering if they're worth getting. So I finally pulled the trigger on Shazam one because I'm interested in Captain Marvel and wanting to get more of the uh, Golden Age Captain Marvel in some form. But most of the comic, I, there was a short Captain Marvel story at the front and then there's a whole bunch of other stories which are more just your standard, well, that's interesting. So we got that. And then we get that. And I think the rest of it is a supposedly an exact facsimile of the way the original comic looked. There's an ad or two in it. Not many, though. Um, so, like, there's the back cover ad. Some other ads. But I don't think there's ads interspersed throughout, so I don't know if it really has all everything that's in here but the comics were very thick back then for that thin dime and um what years 1940 it's of course whiz comics number two not number one which dc is kind of covered up because they want it to be the famous first edition i assume it actually said number two on the original cover but they don't show that here or maybe it didn't but in the in Indicia that they um, that they include. It says volume one, number two, but there never was a number one of his comics, except for some ash can that didn't actually have any new comics in it. So the other, it has Ibis, the Invincible, Golden Arrow, Smy, Spy Smasher, Scoop Smith, Lance O'Casey, Dan Dare. So I hope to read all of those eventually. I. I hated when I used to see the Golden Age art as a kid in the early Bronze Age. I used to hate the Golden Age art, but now I am getting a big kick out of it. That almost has a Simon and Kirby look there. Huh. Okay, more to be looked into on that. And finally, um, near the front counter, they had this artist's edition for... Chris Somney's Daredevil that I've been eyeing for years um, thinking about getting uh, but never quite pulling the trigger on it because I'm always buying the older ones like you know Jack Kirby and mostly Jack Kirby and and Will Eisner um, artist editions but on a whim I asked the guy because th these things also never have a price sticker on them 
But um, since buying this, I looked on in stock trades. They sell it for $120. I've seen other places selling it for $130. So I at, and um, at this sale, the back issues were 50% off, but the books, the trade paperbacks, were 25% off. So not knowing what the price is, I didn't know what 25% off the price of this would be. And I was thinking, well, maybe I'll come back to the store later before the sale's over if, if the price is right. Um, but so I asked the guy at the counter, um, how much is this book? I don't see a price on it. And he said, well, what do you want to pay? <laughs> and I kind of gave him a dumb look. Uh, and I said, well, and I think I, I either said, or, or it was implied. I said, well, I don't know what the starting price is. And he said, well, I think it's like a hundred dollars, um, but we'll give you a, a way lower discount on that. Um, it's been sitting around a long time. How much do you want to pay for it? So I, I said 60 because I was pretty sure it was 100, actually a $125 book. I said $60. And he said, well, how about $40? <laughs> so then I bought it on the spot. I couldn't not buy it. Because that basically made meant I paid... 33% of the real price of this book. And this one is unusual. It's got the usual um, hardback. It's got, it reproduces Chris Somney's original art for, I think, four different issues of Daredevil. It also actually includes his thumbnails. So I guess he must have saved, saves everything. So at the end of each story, let me see if I can find it, are... The thumbnails that he very thoroughly does before he draws the comic, even with layout of where the dialogue goes. And um, and then they've included an extra book, which are scans of Mark Wade's script, uh, Chris Somney's copy of Mark Wade's script. And uh, so on each page, Chris Somney would doodle his initial ideas of how he's going to handle these scenes as he's as he's reading the script the first time through so they include all of this now it's if i have a lot of time i think i would go through and read the script and then look at these and then look at the the thumbnails and then look at the final copy um, but it would take a lot of time to do that, so we'll see. What I, but still, it's kind of a fascinating thing, and I think this is the only artist edition that does that particular thing, because they're li dealing in this particular case with a a youngish um, living comic book artist who still has all his materials, I guess, to share with them. I don't know. If it's in general, this hasn't sold or just didn't sell for that store, so they were eager to get rid of it. He did, after, after I bought it, he did say, well, don't tell my boss how cheaply I sold that to you. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, maybe uh, the boss doesn't track the records that much, and he just knew that she would be happy that it was gone, but didn't maybe not happy if she knew at what price it sold at. So anyway, I'm real happy with that. Real happy with this whole um, this whole haul. So go out there, check out Silver Age Bronze, uh, Silver Haired Bronze Age Babe Comics. Check out Chad's Attic. Check out uh, Stango Tiger Fists. And I will be back with another video soon. Goodbye, everybody.